Welcome back, everybody, to TM Farms. If you uh, missed the last episode, we're uh, reconditioning our John Deere 230 disc, 23 feet wide. And uh, one problem we had was the discs were spinning on the arbor. We can focus in on the shaft here. These discs have a square cutout and they don't turn on the shaft. The shaft will all turn them together. But on this particular gang, they were spinning independently of each other. And this caused a problem for dirt. If you remember, Trevor, dirt was pooling ahead of the disc and we could never fix that problem. And this is the uh, center uh, right gang, center right rear gang in the uh, center of the disc. So the way this thing works is the arms fold out. The front gang is tilted to push the dirt out a little bit as it cuts into the ground because those gangs are all angled forward. And then the back gang here is angled rearward, angled backwards, so it pulls the dirt back in. So one problem we had is our scrapers, which is what we're going to work on now. Today, today's job is to take this scraper bar off completely. We're gonna make it like the front scraper bar. So on the front scraper bar here, this guy, the previous owner, we bought this used, has modified this completely. He welded on scraper arms. These are the original scraper arms. These are the contouring ones, the, the flexible ones. The ones on the back are the rigid ones, which means they don't follow, follow the contour of the disc. The way that these are supposed to work is that a spring is supposed to attach here and here on the two of these and pull them so that way they uh, uh, hit they flush keep tension, on the disc. Keep stay flush on the disc, eh? Exactly, and then this is flexible here so it can ride along the disc. And that's what the plan is. We're gonna redo uh, the uh, scraper bars. scrapers on the front. All the center gangs, basically. One, two, three, and four. We're gonna do all new scrapers. Uh, the outside gangs look pretty good. They're close enough to the disc. We're not trying to make this new. We only use it once or twice a year, so it's not worth investing a whole lot of money. But when we need it, it has to work properly. And it's not acceptable to be a kind of uh, having dirt build up in front of the gang. We just can't function that way. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this scraper disc assembly, scraper bar assembly off. We're going to start by undoing these bolts here, and it should just drop right out. However, uh, we can't get our impact gun in on here because of the angle of this scraper. I'm going to take this scraper off, and that'll free up access to this. Look at that, okay. So there, that just pops off, and then this will just slide off. So with the new system, or newer system, we cannot find this bar on John Deere's website, this part, so we're just gonna build it ourselves. We'll just drill press the holes in, this is a nine inch spacing disc. So we will just uh, drill holes every nine inches here, and then um, attach, or fasten our arms onto that. Should be a, a fairly simple job. So these ones, if, uh, I'll show you guys the mounting brackets here. This uses a, an arm here that has a U-bolt with a bracket right there that clamps the tube in place. The old one here just sat on top with a bolt running through and this little uh, plate holding it in. So we have to buy or get new brackets right here. And then after that, it should be good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna take this scraper off. is free. If for some reason. There we go. There we go. That's one way to get it off. That's probably the easiest way. Yeah, I got it. Ooh. Here's a diagram of the disc. This is a parts diagram. Now this one is for the seven and a quarter space. I accidentally printed the wrong one. I'm gonna have to go home and reprint the nine inch because I just realized our disc is a nine inch. But we need some of these brackets here because, uh, well, the other ones are for the wrong, those are for the fixed type when we're doing the contouring. But we need to uh, grab some of those and I also need a U-bolt. So. Also, check out this amazing merch. You can find, uh, just buy yourself some own merch, TM Farms merch on our website, www.tmfarms.ca. A link is in the, in the description down below. When we say merch. merch, what are we talking about? 
uh, T-shirts. Merchandise? Uh, is that what that stands for? Yeah, okay, merchandise. Well, for the non-millennials out there, can you at least say the whole word? Merchandise, sure. Uh, this is the basic T-shirt. Right now, prices are a little high. I'm working on getting the prices down through a local supplier because right now I'm ordering through a corporate company. And then this is a uh, this is the, basically the model. It's the premium T-shirt. It's a soft, softer fabric. But, uh, and we're giving free rides to a select have, group of individuals. It's going to have white rating here because I did not realize how dark the shirt was. But it's going to have white rating for Teenum Farms and it looks super good. Also, I have a Teenum Farms hat. I just uh, We're just starting our order on those. So, uh, yeah, for sure, go check out our website. Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, we're here at the shop. We're doing some quick, a uh, little bit more disc work on the uh, John Deere 230 disc. Uh, where you already took off the gang as we saw in the other video. And we removed the uh, scraper arms off of all of the discs. And now we have a quick welding job to do. Uh, but first, we got a few words from the old man here. Hey everybody, I know uh, this is difficult times for everyone. We're here in the shop self-isolating. We're encouraging you to do the same at home. This virus has infected over 700,000 people worldwide and that number is probably much higher than that. There's been over 36,000 deaths so far and the US government projects that there will be one to 200,000 deaths. We're encouraging you to stay home. Just take the social responsibility here. Make the sacrifice early on so that you don't have to make the sacrifice again three, four, five, six months down the road. If we have to do that, it'll be a complete waste. Thank you, everybody. Okay, anyways, uh, moving on to <laughs> the brighter side of things. We are missing a scraper up there on that disc. This is what we're gonna do. We have to jerry-rig another one of these like the previous owner did as we cannot mount one to the mounting rail up there. Uh, due to limited space and length of the scraper arm uh, up here. So we've fashioned this plate three by eight inches. We've drilled a couple of holes in on the drill press. What we're going to do is weld this up here like so. So that's what we're going to do. Today we're going to weld that plate on, bolt it all together first. So we got to dry fit it. And yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Okay, so there we've assembled the mounting plate. Show you this job we did earlier today. We mounted a slow moving sign with this little bracket I home fabricated here. Uh, and all we did for that, I'll come around here. I was not able to get any uh, video of this. But all we basically did is we uh, drilled holes and we ta tapped the screws in and put two screws into the frame. And of course, we used some thread lock because we do not want that falling off. I don't quite have it mounted. I want to see if it's close enough. Dirt might fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just seeing that. So I don't have it mounted close enough. Now what I'm going to do is just turn it in a bit. Okay, so that looks like that is dry fitted now. I'm going to come along with our uh, amazing Milwaukee uh, battery grinder with a flap disc on the end. Because you do not want to remove too much material. And I'm just going to remove some of the paint so we can get a nice clear area where uh, we can weld that. And you might be asking why. Okay, we're gonna get the welder set up here quick. This is a Lincoln 210. Lincoln, man, some of the best in the business for sure. They're right up there with Miller, so highly recommended, this welder. This welder's fairly easy to set up. You can just click the home button here. We're doing uh, flux core, no gas is required. And we are doing 035. What gauge would you say our metal is? 12. 12 gauge metal. Basically gives you your parameters. I like to bring the wire speed up a little, me personally, and a little bit up on the voltage here, we'll bring it up by 0.3. So there we go, the welder's all set up, pretty easy to do. Okay, that job's done. Pretty good job on that. Very happy with it. Uh, I just want to say thanks for watching, everybody. We do uh, really appreciate it. Comment, like, hit the big thumbs up button. Uh, consider subscribing down below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell right next to it. It really does help us out. Uh, stay tuned for a lot more videos to come, both on the disc and uh, in the 2020 farming season ahead. And uh, we do appreciate you guys watching. God bless, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, see you in the next one.